a tier list uh, regarding the items of Lethal Company um, and what items you should be buying, what items you shouldn't be buying, what items are kind of just more along the lines of funny and which items are actually incredibly useful. This tier list will kind of cover all of that. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get just jump straight into it with the boom box. Uh, this thing is semi-useful. Um, it's like not incredibly useful in terms of like a noise like luring device um, because of how expensive it is. Um, but to just kind of boost morale by teammates and then also to kind of use it as a lure um, with noise, it's kind of all right for that, but it's not, I can't see myself super interested in using the money to buy it unless it's on sale. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in C. Um, next up is the extendo ladder. Um, the extendo ladder is kind of just all over the place with what you can do with it. Um, you could use it to climb up to certain fire exits that are really useful um, in order to skip a bunch of time in order to get into the bunker faster. You would also use it to get past a jump that seems kind of difficult for you. Um, but other than those kind of uses, it's pretty niche. And it's also one of the more expensive items. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in C because while it can be kind of useful and funny at times, um, it's got its own kind of niches that it hits. But other than that, it's not like a must have. Um, I guess I'll talk about the flashlights right now. Um, the normal flashlight is like, it's really not worth the money. And the reason for that is because it's only got a two minute duration, which is half of that of its pro counterpart. And on top of that, you also just get like no light with it. And if you're gonna be going for a flashlight, you may as well go for the pro flashlight unless you literally just don't have the money for it. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in D. It's like, just get the pro flashlight. It's honestly S tier because the pro flashlight is just more light, um, double the duration time, which for how little of a time you have to actually explore the bunker and how dangerous it can be to lose light in the middle of the bunker, it's incredibly good to have something that just has a longer battery life. Um, and on top of that, they're both pretty cheap. So if you're able to just spend the extra money to get a pro flashlight, I'd honestly rather have one pro flashlight in a team than two regular flashlights. Uh, next up, I'll go ahead and cover the jetpack. Uh, I'm kind of doing this in a weird order, but the jetpack is the most expensive item in the game. And I can kind of see why it's like essentially the only way to fly. It can be pretty useful at night when you want to avoid enemies that are walking around. Um, but other than that, I don't see much of a use for this, except for maybe speed running the manor. Um, if you go on rend a lot, which I'll talk about in a future video, um, that can be pretty useful for getting up high, but also it's very easy to injure yourself, injure yourself with the jetpack. It's super expensive and it's battery life isn't incredibly good. It's just not useful for getting around inside. It's mostly just useful for getting around outside. So for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, mm, let's put it in B. I think it's just edges out from the boom box and the extender ladder a little bit, but it's also just so expensive. Next up, I'll cover the lock pick because it's something I seldom see people talking about or even see footage about. Um, the lock pick is essentially an infinity key but it has a 30 second timer on when it actually unlocks the door. So it can be really useful for clearing out areas without a key. Um, if you get super unlucky and you don't find a key in the bunker, this is kind of honestly a must because sometimes there's just straight up only loot behind locked doors and you get unlucky. And if you don't have a key and you can't find one, then the lock pick is, it saves you from literally not getting anything on that run. Uh, other than that, it's, it's just as expensive as a flashlight. It has a 30 second timer, but you can pick it up every time uh, you use it on a door. So I'll go ahead and put it in A, honestly, because of the fact that you can use it as a key um, for any locked door and you just kind of haul it around with you and can get into any door you want. Another thing I seldom see talked about is the radar booster. Um, the radar booster is actually really, really useful. Um, it acts as a beacon and a separate camera. So what I mean by that is if you bring it into a bunker, the beacon part of it is where you can ping a sound to it and, from the ship 
and it'll act as kind of like a beacon of sound for anything in the bunker that gets attracted to sound or just for someone who might be lost in the bunker you could leave it by the entrance ping the sound and then you can kind of lead them back to the entrance with that which is really really useful um especially if all of your teammates are dead but there's one in the ship um and the teammate doesn't have a walkie-talkie for some reason this is super useful but also arguably the more important thing about the radar booster is the fact that it actually acts as a separate camera or a person to follow on the monitor in the ship so it has its own name and if you turn it on and drop it you can see everything around it any loot any enemies um <laughs> in the same radius as you would be able to a player um like that you're spectating so uh for ship guy for the ship person this is honestly a must because it essentially helps you both navigate back to the entrance and helps you know if the entrance or if an area of interest has any dangers walking around it i've also noticed a quick little tip with the radar booster is that if you have hoarding bugs like right at the entrance because sometimes they'll do that um they'll grab it which is both a good and a bad thing it's a bad thing because it can be really hard to get their radar uh, booster back from a hoarding bug because duh they're hoarding it but also it can be a good thing because you can see further into the bunker without having to actually venture further into the bunker um which can be really useful because you can identify sometimes places where there's a fuck ton of enemies so honestly radar booster i wouldn't even put an a i put an s um because it's just not super expensive if you have an extra camera when all of your team is sticking together, it's super useful to be able to check to see if the entrance is clear. Um, shovels are pretty obvious, self-explanatory. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what a shovel does at this point. You whack things with it. It's not super expensive. However, it's really easy to find signs out in the wild and out in the bunkers. Um, and if you have a sign, there's just no reason to get a shovel. Then again, if you're tight on money and you have signs but you need to sell them, shovels can be a good, useful thing to just have like one of in order to hit snare fleas and to hit um, hoarding bugs or hit anything that's kind of killable by a shovel. However, I just think that you can find signs pretty easily. And if you're unlucky, then get a shovel. But if you're not unlucky, just use the signs. For that reason, you have to spend money on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and put it in B because <laughs> overall it's just just as useful as the signs that you can already find without having to pay for. Um, next up is the stun grenade. I know a lot of people know about the stun grenade, but I don't think I've seen a lot of con content surrounding the stun grenade. Um, it can be kind of a lifesaver, but the stun grenade is essentially the only counter to a select few enemies in the game. So if you're running from enemies that happen to be faster than you and you throw this stun grenade right at the right time uh, it can literally save your life and get you back to the entrance because it does stun certain enemies i know a couple of friends that have circumvented getting killed by enemies because of this this little device here it's also relatively cheap so i'm gonna go ahead and put an s because it doesn't hurt to just have one uh next up i'll cover the inhaler because i probably should have covered it with the boom box but the inhaler is <clears throat> one of the most expensive items in the game and it doesn't do what I thought it did. Um, I'm sure what most people think it does because it's like one of the more medicinal items in the game is heal you or increase your stamina. It doesn't do either of those things. If you read the description of it, it actually tells you that um, it only helps you carry heavy items for longer or faster, which I noticed a little bit of an increase, but it's not super substantial. Um, especially for the fact that it's got a single digit amount of uses i think it's like six or seven before it gets goes completely out and the major reason you actually want to get it is just to laugh at high high-pitched funny helium voice um but considering the fact that it's super expensive and considering the fact that the effect it has on your carrying capacity isn't really all that much uh, i'm gonna go ahead and put it in c um it's not completely useless but it's just pretty expensive um another thing i should have talked about sooner shit is the, the walkie if you have a team it's just a must uh because it's the only way that you can communicate other than via i guess the radar booster <laughs> or by opening and closing doors but um it's pretty essential to talk between teammates in this game in order to 
succeed in order to get through the bunker without dying. Um, having a walkie-talkie uh, just as a line of communication for people going through the bunker is n not only makes the experience more fun and funny, but also it's just, again, it's a must. I'm going to go ahead and put an S. Just, just get it. It's actually one of the cheapest items in the game as well. Uh, last up on the usable items, I'll go ahead and cover the zap gun. Uh, the zap gun is, I believe, the second most expensive item in the usable items list. It acts as another line of defense that's a little bit more substantial than the stun grenade, but a little bit harder to use and much more expensive. If you haven't seen the mini game, uh, you basically have to just keep the stream of electricity in the center and it'll kind of waver back and forth. And the longer you keep it in the center, the longer you'll be stunning the target you're trying to stun. This is actually one of the main ways to counter certain really difficult enemies in the game, other than the stun grenade, which doesn't always work from what I know. Um, however, just because of how expensive this thing is, and because you're probably gonna be running from enemies in the first place, unless you wanna go full combat mode with like a team of like two people with zap guns and two people with shovels running through the whole fucking place and just killing every monster you see. The zap gun's honestly not all that great. Uh, however, it's really great for defense. It's just super expensive, so I'm gonna go ahead and put an A. I'll finally touch on the teleporters. Um, but first, let me talk about the horn because I don't have an image for the horn here. Uh, the ship horn is pretty important. Um, if you just have an extra $150 to spare. However, it's kind of like there's other ways to get to the ship without having to hear a massive horn blaring through the air. For that reason, I'd put ship horn in like C-ish. Um, that's just something I, I figured I should touch on real quick because I don't have an image for it. But to get to the final two items here, um, the teleporter, it's an easy S tier, and I'll explain why right now. The teleporter is essentially the only line of safety that you have while going into the bunker while you have teammates because if you have a teleporter and you just know that your teammates are getting surrounded or you know that like a teammate's body is somewhere you can actually teleport both living and dead teammates into this teleporter in order to avoid enemies or in order to avoid a fee of not retrieving a body so a teleporter is essentially something that you kind of have to get if you want to continue meeting quotas like late game um, because it just helps you maintain safety in terms of teammates and also maintain just not getting fined from leaving bodies behind. So yeah, it, you just teleport someone from anywhere back to the ship. So that's pretty much a must. It's honestly the highest S tier item over the flashlight. So. Finally, I'll talk about Inverse Teleporter. The Inverse Teleporter is just kind of like a dice roll every time. It teleports you into a random location in the bunker, which for me is like a big fuck no, but with teammates, it's actually kind of cool um, because it teleports every teammate in a different location. But the reason why it's kind of like a fuck no for me is because I every time I seem to use this thing, it teleports me right in the midst of a Bracken or in the midst of some other super dangerous enemy um and i just cannot have good luck with this thing but it can be really useful if you have a team because you can kind of just get into multiple locations of the bunker really quickly especially if you use it in tandem with the regular teleporter it's kind of busted so for that reason it's kind of a worth it dice roll i'll go ahead and put an a just know that it can completely screw you over as well as making you incredibly rich really fast uh, so yeah, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this items tier list. I just wanted to touch on all these items, talk about what they do, and kind of talk about their usefulness in this format. I think it's the most beneficial. Um, let me know what else you want to see. Uh, the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about um, each individual moon and its characteristics. So yeah.